Is it proper to address him as Darth Sidious or Palpatine? From 19 BBY to 4 ABY, he was Emperor of the Galactic Empire and Dark Lord of the Sith. To advance his political career and achieve his goal, Darth Sidious assumed two identities, Sidious and Palpatine. He used both to rise to prominence in the Galactic Senate as Naboo Senator. We're still faced with a question. What do we know about his origins? In terms of his origin, how did he build his empire? Let us investigate. Before we delve into the specifics of the subject, let's look at an overview of Palpatine's origin. Following the conclusion of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, here's a rundown of Emperor Palpatine's life and the events that transpired during his reign. The Sith were the dominant force in the galaxy 2,000 years before the events of the Skywalker Saga. They were ultimately ousted from power by the Jedi, who then relegated them to the shadows. Since that time, the ancient Sith Order has been looking for vengeance, and thanks to Palpatine, those who served the dark side were able to accomplish their objective. In a way, Palpatine has always been regarded more as a natural phenomenon than as a character in his own right, and this has been the case throughout the series. In the Star Wars prequel trilogy, he portrayed a politician and a figure of mentorship to Anakin Skywalker. But this was just a convenient mask for him to hide behind. In the original trilogy, he was the mysterious presence lurking in the background, eventually revealing himself as a satanic being of immense power. The treachery of his apprentice ultimately brought him down. However, he's portrayed in a different light in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Although he's still an evil force with extraordinary power, he's also a person with a family in the story. Despite Lucasfilm's best efforts to convince audiences otherwise, it is abundantly clear that the return of the Emperor was not part of the original game plan. As a direct consequence, the story is strange, and to tell the truth, it contains more than its fair share of inconsistencies. With that said, let's look at Palpatine's origin before the Star Wars movies. The canon created during the Disney era has not officially confirmed any facts about the Emperor's past. The only thing that can be said for certain about him is that he was a prominent politician on his homeworld of Naboo and was ultimately appointed as the planet's representative in the Republic Senate. Other than that, nothing else can be said about him. Unbeknownst to the rest of the galaxy, he possessed a solid connection to the Force, and for some reason, Darth Plagueis, a Sith Lord, became interested in him. The Sith appellation Darth Sidious was bestowed upon Palpatine personally by the Emperor. Palpatine's whole career, down to the smallest of details, was conducted in complete secrecy to advance the Sith cause. However, it is interesting to note that older editions of the expanded universe contain information about Palpatine that may still be applicable today. The story of Palpatine's origin was told in James Luceno's novel Darth Plagueis. Moving on, more specifics on Palpatine's origin. In the book, it was revealed that Palpatine was born into a noble Naboo house and that, as part of his initiation into the Sith, he murdered his own family. Although Disney declared a large portion of the EU to be non-canon shortly after purchasing Lucasfilm, this instance is an outlier simply because the book wasn't published until a considerable amount of time after the acquisition. In addition, since Luceno's new canon novel Tarkin heavily alludes to characters and events from Darth Plagueis, something very similar will likely occur in the new canon as well. Alternately, there's another widely held belief that Palpatine is a great deal older than anyone has ever thought he was. This may be supported by Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, which hints that the essence of a Sith dying is transferred into the body of an apprentice who has just killed him. If this has always been the case, then there has only ever been one Sith Lord for millennia. Gradually, tilting the Force out of balance as his power grew by possessing host after host, said Palpatine was the most recent host. Next, Darth Plagueis and Palpatine's possible creation of Anakin. Palpatine related to Anakin Skywalker a story that he called The Tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. This story was featured in Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. This was a covert account of Palpatine's own master, who he described as a Dark Lord of the Sith, so powerful and wise he could use the Force to influence the midi-chlorians to create life. Palpatine's master was the person who taught him how to become Emperor. This led to intense speculation that Palpatine and Plagueis were somehow responsible for the creation of Anakin Skywalker. 
This was alluded to in Charles Soule's Darth Vader No. 25, in which Vader experienced a vision of the Emperor using the Force upon his mother's womb. This led to intense speculation that Palpatine and Plagueis were somehow responsible for the creation of Anakin Skywalker. It is important to note that this theory has yet to come close to being confirmed, and the writer for the Lucasfilm story group, Matt Martin, has stated unequivocally that this was not the intended implication of the comic. In addition, in the comic book, Shmi appears already pregnant when Palpatine visits her in the vision. Therefore, this may symbolize that Sith has control over the fate of the child she bore. Reading a forced vision is only sometimes straightforward. Moving on, Palpatine's Clone Wars plan and creation of the Empire. When it comes to the Sith, one to seek power and another to wield it, the rule of two states that there can only ever be two Sith at any given time. As a result, it's only natural that Palpatine successfully killed Plagueis, the master to whom he had served as an apprentice. Following that, in Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, he caused a disaster on Naboo, his own planet, to ensure his rise to power. As a result, Palpatine became Chancellor of the Republic and took advantage of a worsening crisis in the galaxy's far reaches. The Clone Wars, the ultimate Jedi trap, were started by him and his doomed disciple Count Dooku. The Jedi were overworked and failed to recognize the danger until it was too late resulting in their slaughter at the hands of Chancellor loyal clone troopers. The destruction of the Jedi Order was the Sith's retaliation, and Palpatine's rise to power as emperors followed. The worst part is that Anakin Skywalker, whom the Jedi expected to kill the Sith, became the apprentice of Darth Sidious. But the victory was not without cost, as Jedi Master Mace Windu reflected Force lightning at the Emperor, severely injuring his physical form. Following that, Palpatine's future plans during the Empire. Like any good tyrant, Palpatine wants to grow and strengthen his position as ruler despite his overwhelming domination over the galaxy. He commanded Darth Vader to carry out the purge against Force users and the few remaining Jedi, and he exploited the Empire's resources to construct super weapons such as the Death Star. Despite this, he sought power in the unknown regions where he felt he could find some origin of the Force, some dark presence created of evil energy, as recounted in Chuck Wendig's Aftermath trilogy. Finally, the Emperor wished to defeat death in order to rule perpetually. The Emperor's discovery of the old Sith redoubt of Exegol, home to a group of loyalists who had hidden there since the Sith Empire's collapse a millennium ago, is likely to have brought some of these objectives into focus. Next, Palpatine's death and resurrection. When Palpatine's apprentice betrayed him, his meticulously crafted plans fell apart because he hadn't factored in the prospect of atonement. Darth Vader sacrificed himself in Return of the Jedi by killing his master out of love for his son, Luke Skywalker, rather than out of duty to the Empire. Although the Emperor had not prepared for the treachery, he had made plans for a new Empire to be formed in the Unknown Regions. Meanwhile, he was brought back to life on the planet Exegol, where a new fleet of Star Destroyers was being manufactured discreetly for reasons that are yet unknown. Palpatine's resurrection rendered him handicapped and reliant on technology for survival. With this in mind, the Emperor began considering who may be suitable to house his spirit. Moving on, Palpatine's family in array. The revelation that Palpatine had a son is one of the most surprising story aspects of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. The film does not reveal his name or the circumstances of his birth, making it impossible to piece together how the son fits into the Emperor's story. Little is known of the son, except that he and his wife eventually became junk traders after having had enough of the Emperor. They were concerned that the Emperor would come after their daughter, Rey. They accomplished this by hiding their daughter on Jakku, where a powerful dark side nexus, ironically developed as part of the Emperor's contingency, would obscure her force potential. Rey grew up and finally fled Jakku to become a Jedi Knight and part of the Resistance. Following that, Palpatine's plan and defeat in the rise of Skywalker. Palpatine began a new intergalactic war to further his agenda. The First Order was merely a means to an end, and their blitzkrieg was designed to draw Rey into the conflict. The Emperor's plan to entice Rey to seek him out by making his identity known to the entire galaxy paid off in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. The Emperor had intended to possess Rey, but when she and Kylo Ren appeared before him, he realized he didn't need to. Palpatine used the energy he drew from their Force Dyad, a term he coined to regain his health and youth. 
When the Resistance fleet arrived at Exegol to try to keep the Sith's new Star Destroyers at bay, Palpatine transformed himself into the embodiment of all the Sith and unleashed their power with devastating results. The good news for the galaxy is that the Emperor greatly underestimated the strength of the Jedi's spirits, so Rey could stand up to him and use the Force for good. She imitated Mace Windu by turning Palpatine's Force lightning back on him, killing him for good this time. What are your thoughts in this video? What about the origin of Emperor Palpatine? Is it true as per your expectations? Please let us know in the comment section down below. Well, that marks the end of today's video. On your way out, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.